guys, um, I've had a few requests to do a review of my bike. I did one when I first got it back in like the end of September-ish or beginning of September-ish. And uh, of course that was the first initial ride. So I've had a few people ask, you know, hey, how's the bike doing? Any things you've changed, etc. So I thought I would go ahead and do that. I've got a busy couple of weeks coming up. Uh, I was going to try and get a ride in today uh, in Phoenix. We haven't even left Havasu yet, and it's, you know, 1 o'clock, so it's probably not going to happen today. And I have my NBAA uh, race tomorrow morning. I'm hoping to ride South Mountain on Sunday. Heard a lot of good things. I'm way excited about it. Uh, Dusty Betty, they just uh, released their video from their ride, and it looks like so much fun. I mean, it'd be really fun to do it with, you know, some other people, but even if I have to go by myself, I can't wait to try that out, so... Anyway, the bike. It's an intense recluse. It's the elite build. I was not planning to go that high in the bike, but I got a killer deal on it because of some miscommunications and stuff, so I couldn't pass up the opportunity to get this level of a bike for the amount that I paid for it. So this one is also my first carbon fiber bike. Was way nervous, way, way nervous on a carbon fiber. Um, that was probably one of the reasons why I was kind of holding off on, you know, pulling the trigger on buying it is because I was so nervous about carbon fiber. Um, I had read all kinds of reviews, some really good, some people were skeptical um, about when you crash it and everything like that. So that was on my brain for my first few rides. Uh, it's way light, especially compared to my Anthem. Uh, the wheels are carbon fiber, so I was nervous about that. Like. You know, I was going through rock gardens like, oh, don't hit that rock. Like, it might damage my wheel. And, you know, they're really strong. Like, it would take quite a bit to actually damage them. So I'm not worried about that per se anymore. It's not in my thought process when I'm riding, which is nice. Some of the changes I've made to the bike so far would be the handlebars. I run a um, flex bar by Fast Company. I actually have been running their bars on my ATVs for, I don't know, 12 years now. They have a sort of a flex motion to it, so when you're going through rough stuff or, you know, anything kind of bumpy, it kind of absorbs that. It just, I mean, I don't even necessarily notice it, except when I'm going into, like, something really hard, like downhill, I can feel it give a little bit, which is actually really nice. It takes some of the burden off of my elbows, my wrists, and shoulders, so... That's one of the changes I've made. Um, I went with the Dighty Pills, Pedals, <laughs> Pills. <laughs> with the Dighty uh, flat pedals for now, really dig them. They're a really large platform, and they have the little uh, screws on them to give that extra bite. They've held up amazing. I was a little nervous in the beginning because of how big they were. I felt like I was going to hit every rock out on the trail, and I hit these less than I do on my giant Anthem. I have less pedal strengths. Uh, the other change... I had to change out the dropper posts a few times. The first one failed on me. I don't think it was any particular reason. I think it was just a fluke, and they were really good about shipping me a new one. Uh, right now, I have a. I had to go down. I went to a 125, and I still think that is like a hair too. Actually, I think it's it's too big because I'm at the end. I, I cannot go any lower. It's all the way down to the frame. And I would love to have a little bit of room there to play, but I don't. And at uh, when it's all the way up, it's almost too high for me. So sometimes I have to lower it just a little bit. So I might drop down to the 100 level. I haven't changed too much on this bike. I changed the tires from what came stock on it. Uh, I run Maxxis uh, on everything. I really, really love their tires. And they support us in our ATV racing and have, uh, especially me, from the get-go. I just, even if they weren't supporting us, they're, to me, they're the top, the top tires on the market. I like the diversity that they have. They're always trying to stay with the times. Like right now, they just came out with a new 2.6 and a lot of different of the uh, tires. Right now, I've got two fives on the front, Minion DHF, and then I've got 2.35 Icons on the rear. Tire-wise... I really, really like the Minion up front. I feel like it's like the best tire so far that I've ran. I like it wide, but it's not like plus style wide. It's like that in between, a good medium. 
And then on the rear, I was running a Minion a DHF, only because that's what they had in stock. So I'd like to try a rear, a DHR in the Minion. Um, I haven't tried that yet. So right now I'm running the Icon, and that is a really fast roller. Really uh, low tire resistance, rolling resistance. Um, and I feel like this tire really introduced me to that concept. Because I was running the Aggressor on my Giant, and I could tell a noticeable difference when I went onto this tire. The sucker likes to roll. But, with that, you lose a little bit of the burliness to it, which makes sense. So, I think... For me, when I wear this tire out, I might be going back to the Aggressor, or I might try the DHR Minion, so. Um, I run the stock seat, and people give me like crooked looks. It doesn't bother me. I, I don't want a big, beefy seat. I like it to be narrow, almost kind of race style. I don't want it to be in my way. I don't feel like it bothers me. Um, you know, I wear, and I don't always wear the monkey butt shorts or whatever people call them. Sometimes I just wear compression shorts, so I don't know. Um, another thing I changed on the bike are the grips. I went with the Amy grips. They also support us um, in our ATV racing, and I just, I really like the grip on these things. They're the lock, um, so that's nice. I know that they're not going to come off, and I don't have to do anything spectacular to my bar, like put glue or anything on there. Um, and then one of the other things I've done is I like to run my phone on my handlebars a lot, especially when I'm in new train. Like when I go to South Mountain, if I make it there on Sunday, I'll have my phone on my bars because I like to be able just to boom, 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 see where I'm at on trail forks without having to like take my pack off or pull it out of my, my pant pocket or something like that. So I run it on my uh, bars right here usually. I put this thing on. I just ordered it on a whim from Amazon. It's just a uh, an extender, if you will, because I it's for my light. So if I do any like night races or night riding, I can put my light. I like I want it to be centered and I want it to be low profile. So that's why I got this. And I sometimes put my phone mount on it, and then it centers everything for my OCD. So um, phone mount wise, what I'm talking about is this little guy. This thing. Hands down, the absolute best foam out I've tried, and I've tried several of them. I feel like it's very sturdy, and it's super easy to use. It doesn't require a ton of crap. It's not a huge case, like big and bulky. I like it sleek, slim. So you get the mount. I think this is like $29 or $39.99. You can get it from like Best Buy, Amazon. It's by Life Proof, and I believe it's like Live Active or something like that. If you can see it, this is magnetic, and then there's two little arms that cinch into this, this little piece back here. And when this lever is, I sorry, I got it upside down. Uh, when this is up, that's locked. And so those little, those little teeth will grab into the little holes on the side of this mount. And all you do, because you got this on your bars, this piece, is that. It's done. It's on there. It ain't going nowhere. I did notice when I first got it, it's got a little bit of a wiggle. But I have had zero issues with this thing, and I've crashed numerous times. Over the bars, slid out, everything. The thing's been hit. It's crashed numerous times, no problems. That little bit of wiggle is it's just there. It's not a ton. But when you want it off, all you do is you just flick down that little lever, just pop it down, and then you just rotate the phone, and it pops off. That to me is money. Like I like to have my phone accessible. Like I said, I like to be able to access trail forks and stuff, but if I wanna take it off and take a picture or maybe a video on my phone, it's really, really simple. And then just to get it to go back, you just pop that back up, locked again, and you just pop it on. Now I have noticed on one occasion, I have forgot to pop that little thing up, the lock, and it still stayed on. Thankfully, I didn't go too far and I noticed it when I went to take my phone off that I didn't have to unlock it. Uh, so I wouldn't recommend that per se, but in the off chance you do, it's magnetic, so it still sticks. Uh, it's still on there, it's just the arms aren't sucked into the, the uh, little pockets there, so. 
I fully support this one. I am not sponsored by them. They don't pay me. I don't have links to like Amazon or whatever for you, but uh, I can post up the actual name of it. And I think my uh, latest friend that got it, I sent him to Best Buy. They have a link on their website. And, and like I said, it's like super cheap, way, way affordable. I'd like to do a more formal review of these bars because I, I really think it warrants that. I know I've said that a few times. It's just so hard with my schedule, especially now that racing's picking back up. But I would like to do some like slow-mo videos of these so you can see them in action. Just do a real thorough review of those uh, for them because I feel like they're really big in the ATV and motocross side, um, but they're real fairly new to the mountain bike side. So I'd like to maybe help them out a little bit there. Uh, overall, really, really like the bike. The only, so back to the bike, the only thing I've actually legitimately have a, had a problem with this bike is the cassette. I'm not a bike expert and I'm, I'm still fairly new to the sport. I think it has to do with the length of the chain maybe. I don't know, but I have noticed that I have to get it adjusted more. Like sometimes when I shift, it doesn't, it like takes a second. I don't, sometimes you can hear it. I usually edit that out in my videos, but there's sometimes I'm like, come on baby, shift shift and it's just because it's lagging just that little bit so that's one thing I've noticed I don't have that problem on my giant or I have it um, so that that's one thing it's not a deal breaker I don't feel like that I wish I'd like to learn how to do that myself so I can just you know quickly do it out on the trail or if I'm like the last time where it really sucked was I went to Phoenix was so excited to try riding there and I mean, within like two miles of the trail ride, it was click. It was making this weird noise, and it was because it was out of out of tune. So, other than that, I this bike is awesome. Carbon fiber. It's light. It climbs really well. I know a lot of people say, like for instance, I raced the cross country series just started, and uh, I raced this bike in it. I've thought about racing my Giant, but I just I feel so comfortable on this bike. And I really like it. Plus, I spent all that money on it. I feel like I should drive it. They consider this a downhill bike. It's kind of funny. A couple of people had commented on the bike, said, it's, oh, man, that bike is beautiful. They're like, whew, that's a lot of travel for these races. But like I said, I enjoy it. Right now, I don't really notice the difference. I'm sure my Giant would be a lot faster out there, and I would uh, have less resistance, or I would lose less power to the ground. But I feel like she's a great all-around bike. I haven't, uh, she climbs well, she descends very well. Um, one of the first things I ever noticed is she likes to go. Like, in fact, there's a couple times I'm like, come on, let's slow down, I'm not there yet. So I'm, me personally, I'm not to the skill level to fully utilize this bike, hands down. Like I am, I'm okay with admitting that. I'm like right now your average Jane. I've been working on wheelies and stuff like that, but again, just your average rider. And I'm okay with that. I feel like there needs to be more of that for people um, to view. I feel like that might make it a little more, I don't know what the word is. Like I feel sometimes, like I love watching all different kinds of videos. I like watching the guys that are freaking screaming down trails. I'm like, oh my God, that is so freaking awesome. Like, wow. Like I would be going so slow through that section. And then I also enjoy watching somebody who's maybe more my skill level going through stuff. And then I'm like, yeah. Like, that's cool. Okay. All right. So I'm not alone in my speed type thing. So I think that's important. Really dig the bike. Hopefully you guys are enjoying the videos. Uh, my main goal or reason for doing them is I enjoy riding and I enjoy videoing and I like playing around with the editing and that aspect. So more reviews come in. I'll probably do a review on uh, my pack. I know I've had a couple of... Uh, people comment about that especially after my pilot rock ride my liat pack thing is bitching super nice well insulated holds up it's protection and everything like that so all right guys if you like the video give it a thumbs up and uh hope you subscribe to the channel speaking of which um i'm pretty sure most of you might be aware of this already but youtube's changed their agreement and that's going to affect smaller channels like myself. I think right now I'm at 200 and change, 211, which I'm stoked about. I've grown quite a bit just since I started uh, using the channel. And uh, it's going to affect me. Uh, you have to have, I think it's 1,000 subscribers and I think 400 hours of views 
viewing time and something like that. I'm pretty sure I'm okay on the viewing times and all that. The only thing I'm deficient on is the subscriber count. I'm at, what I say, 211, so <laughs> I think this goes into effect sometime in February. It would be freaking badass to get that many subscribers by then. Realistically, I'm thinking probably not. So that's kind of up to you guys, you know. If you like what I'm doing or want to see more, you know, your subscriptions and your views and all that stuff, it does make a difference. I don't really care so much about the monetization, although that does affect how YouTube, um, I guess you could say, streams or suggests my videos. YouTube doesn't really make anything on people that don't put ads in their videos, so they don't really um, push those as much, whereas people who do have ads, that's good for YouTube. So it's like this dynamic, it's necessary evil. Um, I try to keep it if I am going to do the ads, like the smaller ones or like the skippable or whatever like that, but that, that doesn't, I just, I care about having people like to, you know, interact with and stuff like that, like a community based thing. So that's where I'm at. That's what I'm doing. Hoping to hit um, South Mountain for the first time this weekend. So excited. That looked like so much fun. Technical, some gnarly little downhills, um, some stuff that's way above my pay grade as far as climbs, but I'd still I'd like to try that and see where I'm at. So hoping I'm going to hit that Sunday. Um, Saturday I've got my cross-country race at Estrella there in Phoenix. So busy, busy. I'm super excited. Keeps me out of trouble and hopefully in shape. So if you guys have any questions about the bike, put them down in the comments and I'll do my best to answer or maybe do a, a secondary video um, going over that stuff. And uh, hope you um, subscribe to the channel and come along.